Hi, I'm Gamar Batar. Welcome to this week's Pocket Pearls. Hi, my name is Sarah Tapa. I'm a fourth year medical student here at Christiana Care, and I'm here with Dr. Elizabeth Shai and Dr. Caroline Bank, two of the OBGYN residents, and we are going to be talking about Tdap in pregnancy. Sarah, why is it important for pregnant women to be vaccinated? It's important for pregnant women to be vaccinated because this allows transfer of maternal immunoglobulin to cross the placenta, which allows immunization for the fetus. So data have shown that if a mother is vaccinated in her third trimester from weeks 27 to 36, this is the highest chance that um, when the fetus is delivered that the infant will have an increased um, chance of being immune to pertussis, tetanus, and diphtheria. And by vaccinating the mothers, we significantly decrease the risk of a mother transmitting or getting sick with pertussis or for the baby to get sick when they enter this world. Is the Tdap vaccine safe for pregnant mothers and their fetuses? It is. It's safe for both pregnant women and for fetuses. And we know this from several different studies that have been done. So two of the companies that actually produce the vaccine combined together to create a data pool to look at the safety and efficacy and adverse effects of the vaccine, both in mothers receiving it and for outcomes in the fetus. So when we look at this data, there are no adverse outcomes of preterm delivery, of stillbirth, of small gestational age, or risks for hypertension in pregnancy. None of these exist. Additionally, for the fetus, there are no negative um, outcomes, and um, the most significant adverse event that is reported by mothers is injection, injection site pain. How effective is the Tdap vaccine in reducing pertussis? So the vaccine is really effective in reducing pertussis incidence um, in infants less than 12 months of age. It's also really effective in decreasing the hospitalization, so they have less severe disease if they do get pertussis, and it decreases mortality related to pertussis, which is highest in infants less than 12 months of age. The CDC cites about 90% effectiveness of decreasing those risks if the mother has received Tdap between 27 and 36 weeks of pregnancy. So when in a pregnancy should we administer the vaccine? So the best time during a pregnancy is during the tri third trimester. This means that a woman should get it between 27 to 36 weeks. However, the best time in that is between 27 and 32 weeks. So it takes about two weeks for all of the antibody to mount the highest response to get a transplacental transfer to the fetus. So, and the highest rates of cord blood um, antibody have been found in fetuses who, in infants when they deliver, if the mother received her vaccine between 27 to 32 weeks. So what if a patient presents late to care or doesn't have a pr adequate prenatal care? So that's when you start to say, should this patient still get Tdap? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Whether she comes in just about to deliver or maybe she delivered in the car, she should still get Tdap any time throughout the pregnancy. So um, it means that it might take longer uh, to mount the, that the baby hasn't received the adequate dosage, but any dosage of Tdap during pregnancy is beneficial. Or if a woman has never received the Tdap vaccine, you can start her vaccination of three doses throughout the pregnancy. So you'd start on her first visit, four weeks later, and then the last dose is between six to 12 months, which you can time between that 27 to 32 weeks like we had talked about earlier. But if a woman delivers in the car, then we're giving it to her postpartum. So how does that help? So in postpartum, you can still receive Tdap and we would encourage, as we do with all women, to breastfeed and the antibodies would still transfer through the breast milk um, if she's received the Tdap postpartum. You mentioned people who've never received Tdap before. Who might that be? Well, that could be someone who grew up in a different country, some of our women who've received prenatal care internationally, 
or someone whose vaccination status we don't know or in an undeveloped or underserved community. Before the ACIP and ACOG committee opinions were out on Tdap in every pregnancy, the suggestion was for cocooning. What is cocooning? So cocooning is the idea of herd immunity and it's that we want to vaccinate and make sure that when the baby comes out, it's cocooned and surrounded by everyone who is vaccinated against Tdap. So it was originally thought that mothers were the ones who are most likely to put their baby at risk of infection. However, now we know it's actually siblings who've been out and are more exposed at school or in the community. So we wanna make sure that everyone who surrounds the baby is vaccinated. So it's not not advised anymore. However, the recommendation is teed up in pregnancy, every pregnancy, but we still encourage all family members or anyone in close contact um, with the baby to be vaccinated to continue the cocooning. So it's not clear to me, how exactly do we cocoon these people? So the idea is whoever comes into the room for a prenatal visit or when the woman's here to ask if everyone who's there has been vaccinated. So I typically ask the father of the baby, have you seen your primary care physician lately? If it's not recent or in the last two years, or even if it is, I still say you can get the vaccine at a pharmacy from your primary care provider. And I ask if there's a sibling, if they have been up to date on their vaccinations to make sure that when the baby comes out, if the mother, the grandmother is helping, anyone who's helping has been vaccinated. So what do you do if you have a pregnant woman at 10 weeks gestation with a young child? And she says that a lot of the child's friends have pertussis, but she's heard that she should only get the vaccination in the third trimester. What do you tell her? So I would tell her, come on into the office. And when she comes in, I tell her, sure, you know, it is most common and most advice to get it in the third trimester. However, due to increased risk of exposure, we're going to give you the Tdap shot now. It's okay to give the Tdap shot in the first or second trimester. It's still effective. It's just most effective in the third trimester. And we wouldn't redose. So every woman should only get one Tdap vaccination per pregnancy. So I would bring her in, give her the vaccine, and tell her that um, it's okay and make sure that the rest of her family is vaccinated as well. The most important things about Tdap and pregnancy to know is that if an OB offers the vaccine to a woman, a pregnant woman is five to 50 fold times more likely willing to accept it and to be vaccinated if you have it in your office to administer to her. So what we need to know for Tdap is that every pregnant woman should be vaccinated during every pregnancy during her third trimester. So, who's in your cocoon? Is it teratogenic though? No, it's not. What about autism? <laughs> what about it? <laughs> Is Tdap funny to you? <laughs> But if someone delivers in the car, then that would be postpartum, right? That is correct. Right. Is Tdap funny to you? <laughs> I know the vaccine. Yeah, I can tell by the way you're talking about this over there that we all just get vaccinated now. So she went to ballet class and not the pox party. Exactly. It was no time for pox parties when you've got that. Mm. All right, Sarah. We okay. all know that when I'm pregnant, I'm gonna step on a rusty nail. It's bound to happen. Is Tdap funny to you? <laughs> <laughs>